Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to have a fun video. Today we're going to talk about what we know about sugar. Or to be more precise, what we've been told about sugar from her current parent. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. So let's talk about sugar. Sugar is a Goffin's cockatoo. The Goffin's cockatoo is a large white parrot with white skin around the eyes and a grayish white beak. The lowers in the base of the head feathers are salmon pink. Cockatoos are approximately 12 and a half inches tall and they can weigh up to a pound. Their lifespan is 40 years or more. Just so you guys that are looking at getting a parrot, this is a, 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 the way most of them are. They have very long lifespans and can outlive many of their owners depending on when you get one in life. So whenever you're thinking about it or planning it, just know the kind of commitment that you're getting yourself into. Uh, this is a video that the that Sugar's parents sent to me. It was a live video showing showing Sugar just chilling on, moving around on her cage, looking around. Very pretty bird. You can see she's white. She's got the the salmon color around her beak, the white around her eyes. So, one of the, the the lady who currently has sugar, she told me she said I've had sugar for four years, and up until about six months ago, they were best friends. She was easy to handle, spent as much time on me as she did on her cage. And then one day she decided she didn't like me anymore. Since then, she tries to bite me every time I get close. For me, this was kind of a red flag, you know. All of a sudden, why why did this parrot change its it's uh, behavior like that and there are many factors I mean the, the woman has already explained to me that her she's getting up in age and she's having some health issues and you know animals can sense that kind of stuff a lot of times and maybe sugar is sensing that you know something's not quite right with her owner or something has changed and and it's it's got her a little anxious that that's one explanation there's there's tons more there's no way of really knowing um, it'll be something we definitely watch out for when we meet her and when we bring her home um, you know cockatoos screech a lot right at night early in the morning that's how I ended up with her the people who had her thought they were doing something wrong and she kept their kids awake all night uh, again this is a this is a parrot <laughs> and they can screech a lot they can be loud it's also a behavior it's something that can be trained out of your bird um, it's something we'll definitely have to work on i've watched a lot of videos on youtube and read a lot of material on how to use positive reinforcement and positive behavior training to try to train this out of their bird um, there'll definitely be a subject on later videos. It's something we'll just have to see. Uh, she says that she <laughs> seems to prefer men and she will lunge at anyone who is afraid of her. Um, for those that don't know, cockatoos are a prey animal. Um, you wouldn't think so looking at those massive claws and talons and that giant beak, but in the wild, these birds are prey. They're preyed upon by eagles, hawks, uh, large cats, even by people in their home country. Um, so th they are a prey bird, and and if they sense fear, they're gonna they're gonna try to buck up against you to say, hey, leave me alone. I don't want you around me. It's just so something that comes with getting getting your bird to bond with you and 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 become friends and and have that mutual understanding between each other. Um, next she said, it's extremely rare that I close her cage. This kind of kind of struck a chord with me as well as who's really in charge in that house. Um, you'll see in later examples that, that with Sugar's current situation, it seems more like Sugar's in charge as opposed to Sugar's parent. And again, these parrots are, they're just like little two-year-olds, you know, they, they, 
they're going to do what they want to do and you've got to be the parent um she's talking about how they still have our bedtime routine that she sleeps on the back right corner top of her cage and i tell her to go to her corner before i turn off the lights <coughs> again you know she this woman is just letting sugar run wild in the house and have free reign which isn't always a bad thing but there should be some structure and it, to me it seems kind of dangerous to have your bird out running free reign in the house while you're asleep I can see how that can lead to a lot of destruction issues and just a lot of enforcement of bad behaviors that that will cause issues with you and your birds relationship and then she commented that she barks um, cockatoos are a part of the parrot family they they all like to mimic their surroundings most likely sugar's heard a dog bark and is trying to copy that which can be very cute so here she's talking about how goffins are, are little birds and by that she means as part of the cockatoo family the goffins cockatoo is the smallest of that family um, she says she's only about eight inches tall which is a little less than the average of you know 12 inches as we discussed earlier but not not it's not like she's too short um, and when she puts up her tiny crest up she looks like a gnome I'm not exactly sure what she means by that but I'm sure it's probably pretty cute uh, she says that she loves acapella music and will sing along like your tone-deaf grandma at church again cockatoos love to mimic their surroundings and, and cockatoos are known for birds that like to dance and move with music it, it'll probably be pretty cute um, hopefully we'll have some videos of that once we once we adopt her okay here she says she's got some weird habits that do a little damage to her outer wing feathers and you can see the curling in that video the video she sent me did show a little curling I mean nothing bad it's it's not like some of the birds that you see online that have really self-destructive behaviors um, says she tries to break seeds and wood pieces on her shoulder and flings it across the room instead this comment kind of bothered me a little bit you know these birds are are foragers and they love to eat seeds and break open nuts and and chew on things and th this leads me to believe that there may be something not exactly right with sugar she may be have a defective beak or it may be hurting her it's something we'll definitely have to have checked out by a vet or consult with somebody more experienced than, than me on this um, here we're talking about what she was feeding sugar um, she says uh, the bags of food that she buys she has to soak it for a few minutes and then give it to her um, the food she gives is a crumble food she says that sugar has a hard time with pellets again reinforcing what we said earlier about how maybe maybe there's something not quite right with her beak or or something that it's something I'll definitely have to have checked out um, she says she gets 10 pound bags and they last about three to four months um, she's had her we, we were talking about birds that, that mutilate themselves you know she mentioned the curling on, on their wing um, she said she's had her share of self mutilators through the years she used to run a rescue and rehab and a lot of times they ended up at the Cape Fear Parrot Rescue because once they've lost faith in humans it's hard to get that back and that's very true um, these birds have a great memory and, a, and are very very intelligent and you know if their owner hurts them or gives them reason to be afraid it's hard to it's hard to get over that and sometimes it's impossible um, I don't think that sugar is at that level but again we'll see I, I, I hope she's not and I'm hoping that we can work with her and you know earn her trust and everything will be great here's a video that she sent me just of sugar on top of her cage 
she's got some kind of stick or something or blade of grass i'm not exactly sure what that is but something in her mouth she's walking around exploring saying you know why are you sticking this camera in my face One thing that the lady pointed out, and the reason she sent me this video, is if you look there in the back, she's got some metal on her door frame and on the trim and on the back wall. She commented, you see the metal that I had to put up to keep her from eating my house. As I said earlier, some of the other comments she made tend to make me believe that Sugar pretty much owned that house and not her. So... Again, when, when she's leaving Sugar out all night and Sugar has free reign and the parrot gets bored, she's going to chew and destroy stuff. They do that when, they, when you're awake. It's If you have this type of bird, you've got to pay attention to it. You cannot just let it have free reign. You cannot let it just roam around free. It, that's how you get in trouble. And then, you know, some people are, oh, you get mad at the bird for destroying their house. And it's not the bird's fault. The bird's just being a bird you've got to be the adult and watch it just like you watch your two-year-old and if they're doing something wrong you remove them from that situation <laughs> she says that she ate the entire piece of door trim there went up and started working on the top trim again she let her she let her destroy the trim and then again didn't stop her when she kept going it's the the bird said okay uh, I can chew on this you know my mommy's not stopping me so I'm gonna keep going this is fun just like a two-year-old when they get a hold of mama's makeup and start painting the walls with it um, she talks about how she quit buying the expensive bird toys and bought a box of children's blocks instead that she eats through pretty quick I wouldn't advise this and I don't think any any professional parrot owner would um, parrot toys and chew toys for birds are made specifically for that purpose they're made with you know non-toxic dyes they're not woods not treated with poisons and varnishes and that kind of stuff you can't really guarantee that with children's blocks Ideally, yes, they should be the same because children's blocks, a kid, a two-year-old's going to put it in their mouth, just like the bird will. But again, I would, I would, I would stray away from that. Uh, you also don't know what type of wood they're using on the the wood blocks for kids. It's, it's. I would, I would stick to approved, you know, bird toys, bird chewing toys, stuff that you can get from the pet store. And they're, they, they, they make expensive ones, they make non-expensive ones. I mean, it's, it's, I would just avoid this when I plan on avoiding this when, once we have sugar. She says, honestly, I'd keep her, he, I'd, I, I'd keep her and will her to the sanctuary upon my death, but I'm 60 years old and have COPD. Her dander is really starting to affect me. She's going, she's definitely going to outlive me. If she can have a good home and be happy, I'd like to give her that chance. This is a very responsible thing to do. And it's, uh, it kind of, it kind of highlights the fact that these birds live an extremely long time. They're not your average pet dog or pet cat or fish. You know, it, most dogs, you know, by 15 years, that's their lifespan. This bird can live up to 40 years. You get a bird later in life, there's a good chance it's going to outlive you. And that's just this bird. Uh, macaws, some of the macaws have 60 or more years. Uh, they, they will definitely outlive you. So, in my opinion, and, and happily, this woman seems to be doing the correct thing. You know, she's going to try to find a good home for her or take her to a parrot rescue. It, it's sad that... that you know she's she's getting up there in age and because of her health issues that she has to has to part with sugar but i am proud that she is doing the right thing and honestly the you know these birds can have dander D different parrots have different you know issues that cockatoos can be a dusty bird but there's 
there's stuff that you can buy to help that. There's aloe sprays and, and giving your bird a bath and, and vitamins. And that's the kind of stuff that we're going to try with her. I, I don't really have COPD. I do have some allergies, but hopefully that won't become an issue with sugar. She does not have a big cage here. I bought her a couple and they all seem to intimidate her. That's the primary reason I don't close her cage. She jumps on the floor and walks around every now and again, so she gets plenty of exercise. Now, again, back to letting the bird roam free, I'm not a big advocate of that. I mean, when you're there and, and watching her, yes, I, I'm completely for letting her run free, but the, the 24 hours a day, letting the bird have access when you're not watching her, I'm, I'm, that's not the way it's going to work once we have her. <clears throat> and I've seen a picture of the cage. The cage is basically a, what, what most bird owners would use as a travel cage. Um, we're going to, we're going to see about introducing her to a bigger cage once she gets a little more comfortable here so that she has the proper amount of room because, you know, when we sleep or I have to run to the store, I, I don't want to let her leave her roman free to be able to get into trouble or to get into something that could kill her it says here she'll come with everything i have for her now the blocks her food her cage i hate it when people sell their birds without their cages that's their home darn it very true and that's that's a good sign because this this transfer of sugar from one parent to another is stressful she's going to be stressed out it's new surroundings, new people, new everything. Having her cage and the same food and everything that she's used to, any 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 of that will help transition her. It'll help, you know, relieve her stress a little bit and, and make the transition as stress-free as possible for her. <laughs> I had asked her about going into the shower and bathing the bird. She says she won't go in the shower with me. She takes baths every couple of days in her water bowl. It's cute as can be. I probably have videos of that somewhere too. Um, that's good that the bird is at least bathing itself. Um, you will see that some parrots, that they actually like showers. You know, it, to them it's, it's like rain when they're out in the wild. So I've seen owners that, that are able to take their parrots into the shower with them. Uh, she says hello a lot, and if you have food, she'll say hello until you give her food. <laughs> it's another cute behavior, but it is it is a behavior. It's something that she's been trained to do, basically, by the actions of her humans. Um, she says hello, you give her a treat once. In her mind, okay, every time I say hello, you should give me a treat. <laughs> it, it's just basic behavior training. She likes salmon, lima beans, crackers, and I give her a piece of fig bar every night. Um, most of that's good. Uh, you got, always got to be careful what you give her. And she did send me a picture of the fig bars that she uses, and they are all natural, organic. You know, it's not like she's giving her fig newtons or anything that's full of chemicals that the bird definitely shouldn't have. We as humans shouldn't even have it, but you have to be careful you know you don't want to you don't want to give a bunch of junk food to your bird you want to try to keep their diet as close to what they would have in the wild and and just be be aware that you know a lot of food for humans contains a lot of preservatives and and just junk that again we shouldn't have and the bird definitely shouldn't have um she sometimes says come in when someone knocks on the door again she's People have knocked on that woman's door and she said, come in. The parrot has heard her say that and is trying to mimic that, just showing her intelligence. She also calls Roger a lot. I have no idea who Roger is. I would say Roger was probably one of her previous parents and she remembers that. So she's basically just calling out for one of her previous owners. Again, showing, showing exactly how smart and what kind of memory these birds have. Um, and if I'm talking on the phone, she joins the conversation in cockatoo lecture speak. Do you know about cockatoo lectures? 
<laughs> you can you can see any number of YouTube videos where the the bird in the background just bah, 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 and you know just it sounds like gibberish but it sounds like they're trying to talk it's just not words that you can understand it's a really cute behavior but again it's a behavior if it's something that is unwanted you can help train it out of her um, we'll just have to see what it's like when once she's here <laughs> how she does that it could be super cute or it could be annoying it's something we'll just have to keep an eye on um, well I'll warn you that she is definitely a female and she masturbates against her toys a lot but she's never laid an egg I don't know why this got brought up <laughs> it was it was strange but I think we were talking about how sometimes you know these parrots can get very territorial and very hormonal once they're introduced you know if you have a male and a female that their, their mating instincts kick in and it can it can cause issues <laughs> this was kind of out of the blue I'll just have to We'll have to see what exactly what she's talking about and again this may be a behavior that i have to rely on someone much more experienced than me to help figure out you know the root cause and what to do about it she says when she first got sugar i had an old corgi and a cat sugar played with them kind of not on the ground rolling around but she would hang out hang down from her cage and talk to them let the cat pet her both passed away within the first year and I think she's always missed them that was a great piece of information for me um, my family we have three dogs two chihuahuas and a Yorkie we have two fat cats that are just lazy and fat and lay around um, it, I don't know how they'll all interact but it's good to know that sugar has had some exposure to animals of this sort and maybe it won't scare her as much knowing my knowing my dogs the chihuahuas and new yorkie they'll be more scared of her than she is of them um and water she does often drink my water glasses she i only drink lattes and water and she gets a piece of my fig bar every day and there's the fig bars we were talking about and as you can see they're they're natural organic um should be fairly safe maybe not the best treat but as long as it's in a very small amount I wouldn't think that it would hurt the, the bird at all she gets them from Walmart and they both eat them um, rowdy bush is the brand of food she feeds good to know that because again you want to keep the bird as much as possible on the same routines and schedules and foods as what she had to decrease the stress on her um, these birds get stressed out they can start self mutilating they can start plucking out their own feathers and a quick Google search you can find a, a lot of birds that do that and, and it's it's sad it's really sad to see such a beautiful bird and all of its chest feathers plucked out it, it, it's just not a, not a very it's a very sad thing um, she orders it from Amazon or Chewy whichever has the best price at the time she gets the small pellets or crumbles a 10 pound bag usually costs around $30 last three to four months she's not good at breaking seeds and nuts so I rarely give her those she tries to break them on her shoulder and ends up flinging them all over the place um, she brought this up earlier again I think this is might be something medically wrong or a defect with the bird it's something we'll have to just investigate keep an eye on it and and see see if we can help her the small pellets have, have become hard to find what she has now is crumbles I put water on it for about five minutes then drain the excess off and she eats it really well there's enough here for the next couple months uh, I appreciate her giving me that info that's you know we'll, we'll stick to that at first to make sure that you know everything goes good while we research and, and try to figure out what the what the medical issue may be um, and that's it uh, as I said before it's it's we're supposed to go meet her tomorrow um, hopefully she'll be coming home with us and we'll post more videos um, again if you enjoy these videos please like share and subscribe 